Um, in this one, ladies and gentlemen, what they're asking us to do is to write a proof. All right. So again, if we're going to be writing a proof, we're going to be using our two column proofs. So the first thing we always want to have is have our statement and then our reason. All right. Now, statement of reason. Again, the first start when we're setting up our proof, we want to have our premises written out. What is it we know for a fact that is going to be true? That's going to be what we are provided, which is our um, given statements. So we write down our statements, and then obviously the reason why we know those are true because they're being given to us. So the first one I can say is DE is parallel to FG. Why do we know that? Because it's given to us. We make sure that your figure represents that, and those two arrows show us that they're parallel. The next one is angle E is congruent to angle G. So you can see that these two angles are congruent to each other, again, because that's given. All right, but what they're asking us to do is to prove a triangle is congruent to another triangle. Now, in this homework, we only practice angle side angle and angle angle side. All right? So I know it's only going to be one of those two congruency statements. But for it to be angle side angle, that means that I have to have a side right, that is included, meaning it's right between the two other angles. Well, right now, the only thing I know is one angle that's equal for both of them. Now, some of you might say, all right, well, what else do we know? What else can we think about? And one of the very common ones is looking at this side. right? And you guys can determine that that side is what? It, the exact same for both of them, right? Because it's the reflexive property. So therefore, I can say that line DE is congruent to line ED because the reflexive property, same side. All right. Now, we're not done yet, though, because now we just know that that side's equal for both sides, and we have an angle equal. Yes? You're right. Oh, how easy is that? Um, correct. So now what we need to look at is saying, all right, well, we know that now two angles are equal, and we know that two sides are equal, and that's about it. But we need the third one. So what comes to Guillermo is, remember, Guillermo, do you remember when I said, whenever you guys see parallel lines in a proof, always look for your, do you remember it? Angle relationships, right? How do parallel lines, when you have parallel lines, and especially when you have parallel lines with the transversal, what are the angle relationships? Remember, we can have when we have two parallel lines and a transversal, we could have um, alternate interior angles. We can have alternate exterior angles. We could have corresponding angles. And we could have same side interior angles, right? So if I look at this and I see, all right, I have these two lines are parallel. They are intersected by this transversal, right? What, is ha what can I say about that? Well, you can say that that angle is equal to that angle. Because when I have two angles that are interior of the parallel lines alternating the transversal, they are called alternate interior angles, and they are equal in measure. So now I can say that angle E D F is congruent to angle, or, or sorry, E D F, right? So it'd be to angle G F D. All right? And notice, ladies and gentlemen, when I write these, notice how I write them in the same order. E is corresponding to G. Do you guys understand how those two angles correspond to each other? Then D corresponds with F, right? And then you run back over to the other way. Because notice how these two angles are corresponding, these two angles are corresponding. So you have to make sure you write them in the, same, in the correct order. And why are these triangles? Now, so why are these two angles congruent? Because we have um, alternate interior angles. All right, we're still not done with the proof, though. How can I determine these two triangles are congruent? Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, you can see I have angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. So the last statement of ever your proof, the last statement of all of your proof should always be what you're trying to prove. Well, we're trying to prove that triangle DFG is congruent to triangle FDE. 
and they are congruent because angle, angle, side. And there you go. Does that help out? Maybe. Hard to help.